In this class, I'm introducing you to Java. The Java ecosystem basically contains the Java language, the Java development kit, and the Java runtime environment. Okay, the Java language is uh, an object-oriented language, and the Java development kit it basically contains tools to develop Java programs and a JRE to run the Java programs. So the JDK contains tools to develop the Java programs and also a JRE to run the Java programs. And what are the important tools in the JDK? You have the compiler which is invoked by the command Java C and the compiler compiles the Java source code into bytecode. Then you also have the Java application launcher which is used to launch or run your Java programs and you have the debugger to debug your programs and there is a utility called Java doc which is used to generate Java documentation from Java doc tags which are inserted into the source code. When we come to that I'll explain to you how Java doc works. So what are the most important features of Java? Java? So Java is portable. So what it means is you write once and run anywhere. So this is one of the unique selling points of Java as compared to languages like C, C++ or Pascal or other languages. And Java gets interpreted. Uh, interpreted unlike compilation it does not produce machine code. It produces byte code which gets uh, run, interpreted and run line by line. And Java is object oriented compared to languages like C which are uh, procedural languages. In object oriented languages you divide the complexity of the problem into small objects whereas in procedural programs you divide the complexity of the, of the, of the problem into procedures or small functions or methods which are like black boxes which take some inputs and give you some outputs whereas in object oriented prog programs you divide the complexity into objects which encapsulate both the data and the behavior so there is no data lying outside and Java unlike other languages can be distributed so you can have the Java programs running on multiple machines and talking to each other and Java is secure and it can scale really well when you add a large number of users so when you say Java is portable you write your source code once and then you can run on different kinds of platforms like Windows or Macintosh or Linux or Solaris. So in Java when you compile the source code you take the Java source code and run it with using the Java compiler which is Java C and it, pro and it produces machine independent byte, byte code and this machine independent byte code can be run on any OS or hardware that has a Java virtual machine. So what does the Java virtual machine do? It basically interprets this byte code and converts to machine dependent executable code. So this machine dependent executable code is specific to each machine or each platform like Windows, Macintosh or uh, Solaris or Linux. Uh, if you compare this to C or C++, when you compile the source code in C or C++, you produce machine dependent executable code. So this depend, machine dependent executable code runs only on the platform for which it is compiled. So if you compile C, C++ code on Linux, it only runs on Linux. You again have to compile it on Windows to make it run on Windows. So you have to recompile it for every operating system or hardware. So what is the JRE? The JRE is every vendor implements the JVM uh, and that is called as a JRE. So the JRE is basically the JVM which includes the just just-in-time compiler which is also called as JIT plus the class libraries. The JRE does not include development tools like the compiler, debugger, etc. So to run Java programs all you need is the JRE. You don't really need the JDK. So the JVM actually runs the program and it is called as a Java virtual machine and it is called virtual because it just provides a platform independent interface that can uh, interpret your bytecode. So every vendor of a hardware platform, they provide a platform specific JRE which is specific to that platform. So Sun will provide a JRE which runs only on Solaris. Windows, Microsoft, Windows, Microsoft Windows will provide a JRE that is specific only to Windows. 
and Macintosh will provide JRE which is specific to Macintosh. So the JRE is platform dependent but the bytecode is platform independent. So once you compile your source code into bytecode, you can run it on any platform which has a JRE on it. And there is a, uh, another utility program called Java which is a Java application launcher. It, when you run a program using Java, it opens a JRE for you, it loads the class file and invokes the main method of this class file. The JVM also contains what is called as a just-in-time compiler. This just-in-time compiler will compile your bytecode when it is about to be executed. Hence the name just-in-time. And then uh, this compiled code is then cached and reused later without needing to be recompiled. Whereas if you take a traditional interpreted virtual machine, it will simply interpret the bytecode and that will result in lower performance because each time the bytecode needs to be recompiled and nothing is actually cached. So let's look at how this works with a figure here. So you have the Java source code which is residing in .java files. The Java compiler which is Java C will compile the Java source code which is in .java files and create Java bytecode which is then put into a class file with the same name as the Java file. So if you have a hello world.java, the Java C compiler will compile it into a class file that contains the Java bytecode and that class file is called as hello world.class. So hello world.java gets compiled to hello world.class and the hello world.class contains the bytecode. Now you can take this hello world.class and run it on any platform which has a JRE. And the JRE is the vendor specific implementation of a JVM and this JVM will interpret the Java bytecode. It may or may not use the just-in-time compiler and it will interpret the bytecode and produce the machine dependent code which executes on that platform. So the Java bytecode is machine independent. The JRE and the machine code are platform dependent. So let's see with the help of a figure what happens in C or C++. So on Windows C or C++ code needs to be compiled using the Windows C C++ compiler and it will generate C++ executable code which runs only on Windows. Same thing happens for Linux and Macintosh. You take the same source code, have to compile it again on Linux using the Linux compiler and it generates machine executable code which runs only on Linux. Similarly for Macintosh. So if you compare that with Java, the code is compiled into bytecode only only once and that can run anywhere on any hardware platform where which has a JRE on it. So the Java source code residing in .java files is compiled using the Java C compiler into bytecode which goes into .class files. And now this .class file can run on all platforms where a JRE is available. So the .class file contains a bytecode which is machine independent. It gets interpreted by the JVM and that will generate the platform specific machine code. The JVM is implemented by different vendors as a JRE. So this is how the Java platform and the ecosystem works. So to reiterate, the, the JDK contains the JRE as part of it, but it also contains the development tools to develop Java programs. And all you need to run the Java programs is the JRE, which is platform dependent and provided by each vendor. So let's try to run a hello world program and try to understand how you can develop Java programs and compile and execute them.